Chad, first, congratulations on a great picture. Uh, my quote for it is that this was inspirational and necessary. Right. Um, my first question is, I think one of the interesting things that I learned about Jackie through this picture is that how much he didn't really want to be a hero at the beginning. He just wanted to play baseball. Right. But he took on that responsibility after learning like how much it meant to other people. How much did you learn about the character that you didn't already know going, you know, before going into this movie? Um, well, I, the thing that struck me the most, um, the two things in this statement is that he, baseball wasn't his best sport. You know, he, he was a better football player, he was a better baseball player, a better basketball player, better track and field, he even played tennis. Um, and so he had greatness in him anyway. It just wasn't a place to put it right, right. in these United States. And, and um, what he was able to do once he was given this opportunity is, is actualize that greatness. It, it, he was actually going to quit baseball um, when he played in the Negro Leagues it was such um, such a hard way of living, right. going on going on and off buses, playing four games a day. You couldn't uh, stop for food. You couldn't shower, um, right. and so it was a hard life. And they weren't getting paid enough to go through all of that. And so he had at times expressed to Rachel Robinson that uh, he was going to quit. And so if this had not happened, yeah, you know. He would have been, you know, he maybe he was he would have been a janitor. He always talks about his brother, um, had won the silver medal in the Olympics and came home and became a janitor. So it, it, it's surprising to me that you know he, he had that greatness in him, and it was nowhere to put it. I mean, there's there's a lot of rough language in in the movie. To, to be frank, and you as an actor from the South, even portraying the role of Jackie Robinson, how hard was it to, to have other characters saying, hey, you nigger, hey, you porch monkey, all this stuff as an actor? It's embarrassing. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's embarrassing to a certain degree, and, and um, it's difficult. At first, you're bridging the gap because between the past and the present because we use these words co like colloquially. Um, we use them amongst each other in, in ways that we don't necessarily use them around other people. Right. Um, and so it's it's different when the context is you're being berated or you're being attacked with these words in a stadium um, and the intent is to hurt you. And not only that, it's being expounded upon the stereotypes and the the um, the ideas are being expounded upon the way they are in that scene, yeah. and so uh, it, it it gets to a point where it starts to have its its old meaning, its original meaning, and it gets to you, it, yeah. it, and you need to at the end of that scene step away from everybody, and uh, and get back to a place where you can deal with people. Well, it took a lot of courage for this role, man. I appreciate it, man. Great movie. Wish you best of luck in your plays, movies, whatever you got coming right. out. We trained five days a week, um, two a days actually. We, there were conditioning sessions. I had like sort of a, a guru um, trainer, Phil Paulson. Um, you know, I had baseball coaches. It, it was it was intense. It wasn't like essentially my baseball coaches didn't didn't know how to shoot a movie. They weren't worried about shooting the movie. They were they they treated it as if I was going to play a game. So. It was real practice. Well, you said you played baseball growing up a little bit. Little league. So how important is it for little kids right now to be watching this movie? Oh, I mean, that's the reason why the movie was made. Because, you know, there are little kids who don't know who Jackie Robinson is. Um, Ken Griffey Jr. was doing an event with, with Thomas Toll, and, and uh, some kids didn't know who he was. And they, Ken Griffey turns to him and says, we have to do something about this. So this movie was made. Um, What's going on, brother? How are you? Good to see you again. All right, Black Tree TV, we got a special treat. We got Mr. Chadwick Boseman, who stars in Draft Day. First, how does it feel to play a role that, you know, so, so many people are, like, going through these little pre-draft jitters right now, getting ready for Draft Day. And how does it feel to play that role? Man? Well, I mean, you, you definitely go with trying to put your mind in a place where, you know, your, your dreams could go one way or the other. 
and um, you know it's stressful like just just sort of like I've had situations like that did I get an audition or did I get this or, you know you put yourself in that place and and it's still the kids you know what I'm saying so that just put yourself in that and let people walk in those shoes with the character I think is a fun thing to do hello good morning mr. Sutter Weaver Jr. show number one fan Vontae Mack Vontae how'd you get this number you gave it to me at the combine sorry if I called him that's all right it doesn't matter Vontae the dream I mean your career just like these athletes depends so much on st stuff that happens off the field and on the field do you think it's fair to judge people when they get to this level of admiration and success will you be judged for everything you do not just like what you do on screen or what they do on the field it's fair to some extent I mean you I think you accept uh, you know a little more responsibility uh, at the same time you deserve a little bit of privacy so I mean you I think it should be balanced a little bit more than it is um, and especially now with you know Twitter and everything being online it, it takes away some of your your um, your privacy more uh, all the buzz is, I mean everybody's gonna love you in this movie but everybody's talking about August and get on up and you playing James Brown tell me how hard was it to get into those dance moves first off and like but you know pull off some of that and how, how much training did that take and uh, how excited are you to you know to play a biopic of another you know great person uh, it was a it was a scary experience to, to be honest with you. Um, it wasn't something that I felt like I should do at first. Um, at a certain point, I realized that you know it was you know in my path, and uh, you know the dancing part was something that like every day getting up, it was a grind, a serious serious grind. Um, but once you once you start to get it, it's something that you you know you, you want to do it for the rest of your life. Actually, you. You know, I might not let people see it, but you know, you you always gonna wake up every once in a while <laughs> and start cutting the rug a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, it was just fun. Like you're playing James Brown, you get to, you almost feel superhuman. Uh, I don't want to talk about it too much. I haven't I haven't actually seen the movie yet, so I want to wait till I actually see the movie and I have more to say about it. But the experience was was phenomenal. We'll all be excited about that. Last question: Is there any truth to the Black Panther uh, rules? I don't know anything. I don't. There's a rumor, yeah. <laughs> we'll take it for that. Dad in the army. I said stop. My mama left. Mama! Mr. Dynamite. We start the show. No one else helped me. No one else. Damn! Once again, man, I'm loving you as an actor. You just slamming these roles, and and this role in particular. As much as I've already given you credit, I didn't know you was gonna be able to pull it off like you did, and you did. Man. <laughs> you did, cause I'll be mean, tell the truth. Man. If you couldn't do the dance moves, the community was gonna slam you for it, and you 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 delivered, man. I, I really I really <laughs> hands down, I was amazed by your performance. Like, thank you, man. Thank you. So, big challenge taking on James Brown, and um, one of the things that you know, I wanted to ask you about is that you played 17 to 60. How was it when you had to put on that makeup and you had to look at yourself and what would, would, would be, you know, portraying James Brown in an old age, but how was it just to look at yourself as an aged character like that? Um, well, first off, the, the, what a lot of people may not know is that his grandson was on set. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he had a picture of himself and, and James Brown later in life um and and it it sort of helped me to like you know put myself in that mind frame um and he would just call me granddad like wow. everybody else was calling me mr brown he'd be like what's up granddad so uh -huh. um that was probably the weirdest thing about you know changing into the older um the older version of him and I think what I tried to do is just sort of, you know, go to the older uh, black men that I know, my father, my grandfather, and pull from them. And they actually are from South Carolina. 
Yeah. You know, James Brown grew up in Augusta. Uh, but I just tried to go to that place and, and find it in me. It was a stretch at first. Yeah. Um, mentally, but but once I saw I started, you know, trying to connect those dots, you know, his his grandson, my father, uh, my grandfather, and and James Brown himself, it just sort of made sense to me. Yeah. Well, the, like I said, the performances on stage were amazing, but there's there's two scenes that stand out a lot to me, like the the one in the cafe where you're meeting the King's record executives. Uh, do you and, like that scene? <laughs> and the vapor scene with with a, with a girl that's like cooking okay. eggs and stuff. And the one with uh, Viola Davis. How was it like being right there across from Viola Davis, acting across from her in that scene? Because it was so dramatic and so powerful. Uh, she's a master, man. She's a master at what she does. And, and um, you know, I didn't want to leave it. I basically... I, once once we got to the point where I'm sitting and the coverage was all on the, on us sitting there, um, I didn't want to get up from that spot. So yeah. um, because it was just so intense and so like how do you step away and then come back in, into that intensity? So it, it definitely was one of the you know most you know focused intense acting moments I've ever had with anybody. Why you come here tonight? Well, sure. I live in Brooklyn. My baby playing at the Apollo. I don't want you to feel proud. I know uh, a lot of actors like take parts of characters along with them after the movie's wrapped and everything. But James Brown has so many moving parts and so many like uh, things that he believed in. As far as you, you know, leaving that role and moving on, do you think you're taking part of that with you? you know, for the rest of your life? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm def I'm taking parts of Jackie Robinson and parts of James Brown. Um, I think you take parts of every character because what, what happens is you, you have to compare yourself to them in order to play them. You know, right. you have to, you know, see what, what things are the same about me and this person and what things are different. There was a lot of things that were different, um, but, but at heart, like in, in essence, a lot they're universally they're things that are the same in each and every one of us, and so there's definitely some things about his work ethic, his his um, his drive, and his uh, you know his confidence, um, you know his swagger. You wanna you wanna take those things with you, um, even if you can only take a little bit. You wanna take them, and, and sometimes other things come up as well. So. Well. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so first of all, what's it like to be the noobs in the Avengers? Like, y'all are fresh in the whole thing. Like, what is it like to come in, phase three, holding it down, massive battle? What is that like? Oh. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's. I think it's cool to, to have seen the other movies and, and, uh, and to come in and be a part of it, to, to know... Um, that mythology or to know the backstories right. of other characters coming into it and, and you know just the people that you're working with is it's fun I mean it's like an actor's dream to to, uh, to do something you enjoy doing right. and get paid well That's <laughs> like, yeah, at the end of the day like no, you I, know it's it's and and to know that it's that it's leading to something else and it's connected to other things is it's fun no I, and one of the coolest things that I've, I've I've kind of nicknamed you like Mr. History because, like, you know, you had Jackie Robinson and Jackie Brown and you got Thurgood James coming Brown, up. James Brown. I'm so you sorry. Said Jackie Brown. That's What's my, wrong with it's, that's actually, not, it's actually my favorite thing that people do. Actually, when they, they say when that? They, when they put Jackie Brown, they say Jackie Brown. I met, <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. I, the the, it's a great movie, right? But I, <laughs> man, they go, I'm going to get roasted for that later, I'm yeah. sure. But either way, man, what's it like to, you know, no disrespect at all to War Machine or to Falcon, but the fact that. Black Panther stands on his own with Captain America, with Iron Man, because he's got the fortune, he's got the kingdom, he's got the skills. Like, what is that like to step into such a, a major, iconic, like, black superhero? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't, I try not to think about all of that. <laughs> I, think, I think the, I think it's, it's, it's key to, to deal with each part. Um, knowing that it's part of that whole, 
Um, but I try not to think of, of all of those things. I, I more so think about the fact that there are kids who are going to see it, black and white and um, Latin, Asian, that will see it and not think. The same, in a similar way that there are kids that don't know what it's like to not have a right. black president. Right. Like, it's, it's cool that it won't be a big deal right. to them. Um, that's what's more intriguing in my mind. But thinking about like, oh, because there also is Blade. By right. The way. Well, that's true. So, that's true. So that's let's true. not forget. That's true. That's very true. That's <laughs> let's, very true. Let's, let's give Wesley Snipes I gotta give him his, his, his props. props. I, I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> question for you too uh what is it like to step into a role of essentially a brand new life that is a full adult so you're almost yeah. like having to discover life but you're a man that's been the fun bit is that he's uh you know he's just recently i got born on camera that's not going to happen again i don't think you know? but for me in my career <laughs> it might, well, I, it I, you know and it, but you're born and you're sort of omnipotent and yet you're learning everything at this incredible speed and trying to figure out what your place is and and where your what is the limit of your powers and, and 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 what you should use them for and what is good and what is evil and and uh, you know and what is love frankly I think right. because I think loyalty without without love there's no loyalty there's just with logic he could new information can come to light and he can flip sides right. you know but with with love uh you don't so so i think he's sort of it's been really fun that's actually been it's well spotted because that's been the bit that has been really uh, right. genuinely intriguing right well hey gentlemen thank you so much i appreciate yeah. your time it's a great movie everybody go see it it's awesome see it like five six times because i will. oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> yeah see it five six. of course thank Sit this right here. Wait, you know what? We can't do that. That's that's not stable. Can I give you to somebody? Like, I can't. I'm not gonna hold it. All right. It's going great. I won. <laughs> it's great. It's great. How's it feel? Pretty good. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I felt like a winner before I came. Um. And I feel like I'm just representing the other people in that category and representing the movie, um, which was well received. And, and um, I just love the exchange that happened between us and the audience for Black Panther. So it's just great to just continue to promote that. So, so Evan Jackson from Style and Society, what's the most profound feedback you've gotten from Black Panther? Maybe a little kid told you that. Maybe a fellow actor where you're like, wow. It's so much echo, I can't hear your question. Oh. What was the most profound moment you had um, I think one of the most profound, uh, it's so many different things, but uh, there was science courses in um, Brooklyn that you know, I've been I've I've been informed that there are a lot of students that were inspired by by Panther, inspired by the science fiction, inspired by um, Shuri's character, by the suit, by Panther himself, um, and that had somehow increased people's interest in science and studying um, that field. Um, so that to me is is an amazing thing. Um, but it's so many different things that I could that I could. I can name like 30 things off the top of my head. Oh, sorry. Hey, Chadwick, Danielle from Essence. Um, do you feel as though you are- Y'all don't need those mics. Right? I can't hear you. When you had a mic, mic, yeah, it's too much. It's, can you hear me? Yes. Do you feel as though you are living in your purpose? And if not, how does that tap into authenticity? Oh God, you want me to preach a sermon? <laughs> um, I, I feel, I feel like I'm living in my purpose. Um, but the funny thing about, about purpose is that it unfolds 
more and more to you every day. So you can you could be living in what was revealed to you um, at a particular time, and then you might get stagnated because there's more that you're supposed to do. It doesn't just stop as you do one thing. So I think it's I think it's just being open to what you're supposed to do at this moment, not getting stuck in the past, because purpose is not related to career. Purpose is not related to a job. It's, it's, it's related to what God put inside you that you're supposed to give to the world. And you can get, do that in, in various different positions and forms. So I think it's, 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 it's staying open to what that essence is um, at all times. All right, that's three questions. You almost made me preach a sermon. What happens now determines what happens to the rest of the world. say like you know go out there make your mama your mama proud, proud. And stuff. <laughs> how, does it, how does it feel to know that you were part of something that making a whole culture proud like a whole people like how's what's that weight on you uh, um well let's just go back to my mama like like I enjoyed you know we did we had the premiere uh, a couple nights ago and just having her in that room with with all of those people and you know beautiful black people too that they came to the premiere um royal it was a royal experience people came in their african garb or they were they at least um you know alluded to that or, or they signified that and um it was a beautiful experience snoop dogg you know janelle yeah. monet um, being able to introduce your mama to these people is, is 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 an amazing experience. So that to me, you know, I know I know everybody else is having that experience. Will have that experience on February sixteenth, yeah. and, and it will um, resonate. Uh, but I'm feeling it from a very intimate standpoint, yeah. and, and bringing bringing my people here. I, I know you do a deep dive on all your characters, but I wonder, like, I mean, we're we're African Americans. We grew up in the South. Like, how much did you learn about African culture that you didn't know from doing, like, the background on on this story? An incredible amount. Um, you know, like, you can know it from a, um, you can know it from a, from a, from, you know, just a book standpoint. Yeah. You know, you read about it. Uh, but we actually, in some ways, had to create a rites of passage, a coronation um, in this movie. Uh, and, and to elevate the character to a different place. And I actually could feel that happening. And I could feel um, this is beyond research. This is, this is like actually experiencing this moment with a group of people, with the cast, but also the extras who were on set for Warrior Falls who came for weeks. Yeah. Um, when it was a hard shoot, um, they showed up, even though people got sick, their, their, their parents would tell them, you don't need to go back there anymore because I, I would hear their stories. Yeah. Um, and they would tell me, I'm coming back because I've never experienced anything like this. They've never had an African rites of passage in that way, some of them, and they were able to experience that. So not just for me, yeah. the, it, it, it trickled down to everybody on set. Um, so that's something that is... is you know, you can't even put that into words. Sorry. Remote driving system activated. Wait, which side of the road is it? For bus sake, just drive. Okay, calm down. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! It was a... Uh... Scariest thing for you as an actor, or well, not scary, but the most challenging thing, like the accent or the physicality of T'Challa, was did did was the accent did it pose any real? Well, the the, the I think the hard part um, about the accent is you want it to become so natural that uh, you know people forget 
that that's not what you sound like. Yeah. And um, you uh, you you literally talk like that more than you talk in your normal voice. Like even when you leave the set, you're you're still talking like that. Even when you call your loved ones, you still talk like that. Um, so that that is a difficult thing because it's a, it's a certain amount of concentration um, in order to do that that is is not normal. Um, the physical stuff is always going to be hard. It's always going to be like getting up in the morning like when you have <laughs> when you have like f- five a.m. calls. How do you get up and work out? Yeah, yeah. You know, because you still have to work out every day when, when even when you start shooting. Um, so that that grind is a is is it's one is a mental grind, the other is a physical grind, and so you can't really compare them. But you have to do both of them, and you have to, even when you physically get tired, you still have your mind has to be working. So I can't compare them. I just know I had to do it and I had to push through it, um, as as did you know a lot of the other people on this film. But as the lead, you got to do it every day. Yeah. Well, you slammed it, man. Um, great job, man. As always, man. We just love seeing you keep on rising. So keep, keep doing your thing, bro. Thank you, man. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you. Again. I'm good. How are you? Great. Okay, so of course, have you seen the Beachella performance where she honored and recognized the historically black colleges? Yes. So of course, I went to Spelman. You right. went to Howard. Right. Talk about the significance in HBCUs being seen on a on a wider platform for the masses. Uh, it was amazing just to see uh, our culture, um, you know, in that space. How she. Um, how she brought the Greek chorus, which also is our fraternities and our sororities, um, which which have a whole host of other significances um, for our culture together. The marching band, um, which also uh, dates back to like African culture, the way that they, you know, uh, the way the band um, sort of tells a story um, when it's playing. Um, and also, just the, there's there's a lot of people who don't know the excellence that comes uh, out of black schools. Um, from right here, we're right here. Yeah, we're right here. We're right here. We're right here. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that excellence and don't know um, how much it's actually affected American society. Uh, that even in the face of segregation, that we found something that we need to stick to. We found something that, uh, a way that our students uh, can be educated with each other and you can appreciate different aspects of blackness at the same time. People from all over the world go to historically black schools and they, they meet people from uh, the continent of Africa, from the Caribbean, from Europe, from the States, and they're allowed to study together and learn their culture in a way that they wouldn't be able to do uh, on a white campus. And now we're expanding that, of course, with Black Panther and the role that you're playing and what and what you're doing. I want to ask a more personal question. I've been a little worried. You've been doing so much promo, so many films. When you get a break, what's the first thing you do? Uh, um, when I get a break or when I am going to get a break? <laughs> Whenever, when is yeah. the break coming and what are you going to do? The break is coming after Howard Commencement. Okay. That's when the break comes and, and I'm going on vacation. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have you as well. Well, th- y'all didn't invite me. <laughs> you didn't invite me. How I'll beat you to it. We'll Maybe it. another year. We'll make it happen. Thank you Yo, so much, thank Chad. You so much. From the beginning, uh, I knew that we could put a great cast together. Uh, you know, it was the type of movie that I knew a lot of people would want to do, uh, and, and I love the cast that we have. Each 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 person brought it every day, um, and it made it interesting for me to to come to work and like to just bounce off of them. So it was it's all about Stefan, who's next to me right now, uh, Sienna, J.K., uh, Taylor. It's 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 been a great.